That is good. All the time. Thank you, Master. Listen, we are in such a uh, battle. Amen? If you know what's happening physically, you certainly know what's happening spiritually. There's a tremendous battle going on. Praise God. But you know what? We already won. Now we've got to fall through, all the way through. Follow it all the way through, no matter what, no matter what's happening, no matter what you think, no matter what you see, you got to battle and fight until you go home. Would you turn to Genesis chapter 2, please? Verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the hosts of them were finished. Hallelujah. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work, which he had created and made. And this is the history. And the earth... When they were created in the day of the Lord, God made the earth and the heavens. Before any plant of the field was in the earth, and before any herb of the field had grown. For the Lord God did not cause it to rain on the earth, and there was no one to till the ground. Like God was looking for a gardener, right? I don't think so. But a mist went up from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Go to verse 15. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of the Eden and to tend and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. That word eat means to partake. For in the day that you partake of it, you will surely die. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helpful comparable to him. Out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. <laughs> so we see here that God created man, Adam, in his image and likeness to be trained, prepped, groomed for the Lord's purpose. He planted a, what we call a garden. Amen. It was a place of living. And because it, it was a new beginning. Does everybody get this? This was a new beginning. God created man in his image and likeness. Foreseeing the fall of Lucifer, God prepared a place for his limitations. And his confinement, like Guantanamo Bay. God has prepared a place for all of those individuals that will be placed in a confinement for a temporary until what? Sentencing. So the garden was used for not only training, but also for a holding place. Does everybody understand this? For who? Satan, Lucifer, and his fallen ones. Because Adam was now in charge. And God said, okay, now that I've created animals, I'm going to say you name them because you are an authority here. You are now the ruler of this earth. You are the ruler of the world system. And I'm going to train you in this location. And the ones that have forsaken me will serve you. Does everybody get it? Good. Now let's go follow the history of how the ones have fallen ones. In Isaiah 14, verse 12. 
How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, and I will be like the what? Most high. Hmm. And here's the Lord's response. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, the lowest depths of the pit. Okay, we see so arrogance and pride remove Lucifer from his position, from his rank of office, and from his authority into the earth's atmosphere and a place of confinement. Does everybody understand? Go to Revelation 12 and verse 7. And what does it say? It says, and war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old, called the devil, called Satan, who deceives the whole world. He does what? Deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in, the, in them. But woe to the inhabitants of the earth and to the sea, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that he has a what? A short time. So all kinds of things are breaking out. Amen? So we see here, this is an overview of the insight of the Lucifer's removal in his followers. His princes were known as principalities now. So he, Lucifer was considered a king. And, and in this, so now we see all of that, his followers and everything that is happening, which are the fallen angels of Lucifer, they hold key positions right now on the earth. Why? Because he deceived Eve. See, Adam was not deceived by the serpent. Eve was. But then Adam agreed with whatever. And everything fell. So he lost his position and authority. And Lucifer and his fallen angels have taken over. And this has been going on ever since. So go to Genesis 3 so we can confirm this. Now, before we go there, um, we see here that when we look at prophetically symbols, trees are known as spirits. Everyone say a tree is symbolic to spirits. That's why the, the word says you'll know the tree by its fruit. Amen. So again, this was an overview of the insight of Lucifer's removal and his followers and princes and principalities, fallen angels, Lucifer as a king, and his principalities as princes. Genesis 3, in verse 1. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, as God indeed said, you shall not eat of tree, of every tree of the garden, or partake. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. And of course, the serpent said to the woman, you will not die because God's a liar. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. So the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree was desirable to make one wise. She took of its fruit, of its fruit, of its character. Does everybody understand that? Of its what? Character. She partook of this character. And uh, she also gave to her husband, and he partake also, or ate. Then the eyes of both of them were open. Actually, the eyes of both of them were closed to the spirit. They were open to the physical, a whole other realm. 
and they knew that they were naked. Now their eyes were on them what? Selves. This is where self was birthed. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. Amen? Now, the serpent seduced Eve and escaped the garden under Adam's rule. Now he became the ruler of the world system. Now let's go a little further. 2 Corinthians 11, in verse 1. Oh, that you would what? Bear with me a little folly, and indeed you do bear with me. For I am jealous for you with godly jealousy. For I have betrothed you to one husband, that I may present you as a what? Chaste virgin to Christ. Now, what? a chaste virgin is a virgin. Amen? Okay, now I want you to follow this, because this is confirmation what so many people are arguing over. A chaste virgin to Christ. That's what he's saying. Now look at the next verse. But I fear lest somehow as the serpent deceived Eve. Hello. Why? Because she was a chaste virgin, wasn't she? Until he got a hold of her. Does everybody get this? And the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he who comes preaching preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if you received a different spirit which you have not received, or a different gospel which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. Again. Hmm. He's talking about, you know, the present followers of Christ as a chaste virgin. We are chaste virgins. Amen. To Christ, not like Eve, whom was seduced by the serpent, with offsprings, which we call trees of deception. So Lucifer himself was the original tree of deception. Now we have trees of deception, or what we call individuals that are associated. And these trees of deception are producing fruit. We are known as trees of righteousness. They are trees of deception. There's a difference. And Ezekiel 28, verse 1. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, take, uh, say to the prince of Tyra. This is one of Lucifer's princes. Thus says the Lord God, because your heart is lifted up and you say I am a God. Don't they all say they're gods? I, I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas, yet you are a man and not a God. Though you sit, set your heart as the heart of a God. Behold, you are, wi are, you are wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that can be hidden from you. With your wisdom and your understanding, you have gained riches for yourselves. Is this is what's going on. Now, I want you to understand that these these princes now that have produced offspring because they're trees of deception. You've got all of these trees of deception, these individuals that have placed in positions in political, military, medical, and all kinds of things. They believe that they're gods because of their wealth. He said, with your wisdom and your understanding, you have gained riches for yourself and gathered gold and what? Silver into your treasures. By your great wisdom and trade, you have increased your riches, and your heart is lifted up because of your riches. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you have set your heart as the heart of a God, behold, therefore, I will bring strangers against you, the most terrible of the nations. They shall draw their swords against the beauty of your wisdom and defile your splendor. They shall throw you down into the pit. Well, you know, many of the angels right now, well, there's about 200, 200 of them, that are in uh, the pit right now, chained, waiting for judgment. Those are the ones that originated, put on flesh, and went into the women. And verse 9, you will still say before him who slays you, I am a God, but you shall be a man and not a God. And to the hand of him who slays you, you shall die the death of the uncircumcised by the hand of aliens, for I have spoken, says the Lord. 
Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation for the what? The king. So the first one was the princes. Now there's the king. Amen. And say to him, Thus says the Lord God, you are the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in the Eden, in the garden of God. Who was in the Eden, in the garden of God? Lucifer. Amen. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardis, topaz, and diamond, braille, onyx, and jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. Why? Because Lucifer was the praise and worship leader of the universe, wasn't he? You were the anointed cherub who covers the universe with praise. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. When? When God created things. When he created the earth. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created until iniquity was found in you. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within, and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery storms. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your, your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I lay you before kings that they may gaze at you. Ooh. Again, we see here again that the prince's offsprings of the, the serpent, the trees of deception, followers of the original tree of deception, Lucifer, amen, or the serpent, because of their wealth, they call themselves gods. And we see it all over, all over the world, because they've infiltrated in all areas. Go to Matthew 13, 24. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to them, Sir, do you not sow good? Did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? And he said to them, an enemy has done this. The servant said to him, do you want us then to go and gather them up? And he said, no. Lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both do what? Grow together until the what? Harvest. Are we at the harvest time now? Yes. And at that time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather together the tares. Do you get this? See, this is what's happening right now. That's why they're beginning to be more. And, you know, the world has never seen what they see now. They've never seen so much wicked and evilness. They've never had the understanding of what was going on behind closed doors. They thought these politicians were servants of the people when they were servants of corporations and wicked corporations. He said, don't worry about that. We're going to first gather the tares, bind them in bundles to burn them, but the gather the wheat into my barn. Does everybody understand that? So these things are happening right now. This is that process. See, the problem was is while the body became sleepy, slumbering, lazy, and compromised, they infiltrated and took position, bringing chaos, bringing slavery and bondage. Seduced by deception and controlled by fear until now. Now the awakening is happening. The tears of the corruption, tears of corruption of the trees of deception are becoming uprooted. Matthew 7, verse 15. Beware of what? False prophets. Are they trees of deception? Yeah. Who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn, bu thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good what? Tree bears good fruit. But a bad tree bears bad fruit. So would a bad tree promote abortion? 
A bad tree would promote abortion, yes. Does everybody get it? A good tree would say, no, we're not going to promote that death to the unborn. That's a simple fruit. You don't have to check it out thoroughly. That's their intent and their motive is to kill unborn children. They are a tree of deception. Verse 18. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown in the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you shall what? You'll know them. You'll know whether a tree of righteousness or a tree of deception. In Proverbs 23. In verse 1. It says, when you sit down to eat with a ruler, somebody in authority, consider carefully what is what? Before you, and put a knife to your throat if you are a man or woman given the appetite. And do not desire their what? Delicacies. This would be known as their fruits. Amen? For they are what? Deceptive food. So a tree of deception will produce deceptive food, which is known as fruits. Do not overwork to be rich because of your own understanding cease. Will you set your eyes on that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings, and they fly away like an eagle toward heaven. Do not eat the bread of a miser, nor desire his delicacies. For as he thinks in his heart, so he is. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. Ooh. Therefore, the morsel you have eaten, you will vomit up and waste your pleasant words. Deceptive fruit is deceptive food from trees of deception. In Isaiah 61, in verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord is what? Upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the vengeance of our God, and to comfort all who mourn. We are in the year of the Lord and the vengeance of our God right now. To console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of what? Righteousness. The planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Jeremiah 17, verse 5. Thus says the Lord, curses a man who trusts in man or himself, and makes his flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes. In other words, many are going to miss the opportunity of what's getting ready to happen. Many. And shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in the salt land which is not inhabited. Now listen, we are entering a time of plenty before a time of famine. Because Plenty is the time of harvest also. Everybody who got it. I mean, and then famine will increase the harvest because many will be coming to those that are holding the plenty. Verse 7. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is in the Lord, for he shall be a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes. But its leaf will be green, and he will not be anxious in the year of drought or in the year of what? Famine. Nor will cease from yielding fruit. Because he's eating from the tree of righteousness. And that means you will bear good fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart, test the mind and the thoughts. And even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing, because what you eat is what you become. Amen? Praise God. 
Many will miss because still partaking of the trees of deception, eating deceptive food, living for themselves. Matthew 3, verse 1. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Is that happening now? <laughs> Amen. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, and make his paths straight. Listen, we are the forerunners of the Lord's return. We are in the anointing of Elijah. Now John himself was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then Jerusalem, all Judea, and all the region around the Jordan went out to him, and were baptized by him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to the, his baptism, he said to them, Broad of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore, bear fruits worthy of what? Repentance. And do not think to say yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children of Abraham from these stones. And even now the what? The axe is laid to the root of the trees. Do you hear that? Even right now, the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And this is where we are right now. They are being uprooted. He said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winding fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and gather his wheat, hello, into the barn, because the tares are going to be uprooted first. Amen. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. This is where we are right now. This is what's happening. They are being uprooted. The axe is at the root of them all. No one will escape unless they turn and repent. They are being infiltrated all over. They are lying, cheating, and doing everything that they can to escape their judgment. But they have been prejudged. And I'm going to close with 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception. Everyone say unrighteous deception. Among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. Look at how many do, are rejecting the rescue all over the globe. For this reason, God will send them strong delusion. Whoa. That they, may, that they should believe the lie. And that they all may be condemned, who did not believe their truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through the sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. That means to follow the truth. To which he called you by our gospel for the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast. And hold the traditions which you were taught, either by word or, or our epistle. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself, as our God and Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting consolation and good hope by grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word, work, and fruit. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise God.